A growing number of gamers are on the hunt for cosy games that aren't farming sims, which raises the question, have farming sims had their day? Are we all farmed out? Here's my take. Cosy gamers are not bored of farming sims. The popularity of recent releases like Fay Farm, Moonstone Island and Coral Island prove that the genre is still very much alive. So why are we seeking alternatives? Because too many farming sims are too similar. We're not bored of them, we just want something unique and original. If we want to keep the farming sim genre alive in 2024, we need games to bring something really special to the table. So what makes a game stand out in an ever-growing sea of farming sims? That's what we're going to explore in this video. Adjustable day length. This is a relatively new concept and is a feature of games like Wildflowers and Coral Island. Why is this important? Because shorter day lengths can be really stressful for some players, which completely defeats the object of a cosy game. I'm a huge fan of Stardew Valley, but I know so many people who don't like the game purely because the short day lengths made it too stressful for them. Recently, a massive portion of Fae Farm players, myself included, have been calling for the option of longer days. The point is that we all play differently, and if we can't each play at our own pace, then a cosy game just isn't that cosy. A twist in the story. So many farming sims follow the elderly family member dies and leaves you their rundown farm trope, and let's be honest, it's getting old. The most popular farming sims right now are telling a different story. Take Wildflowers for example. Granny's not dead, oh no. She's very much alive, and she's a witch, and she wants you to become one too. And in Coral Island, you're fighting back against a massive oil drilling corporation, threatening the islander's entire way of life. And then of course we have Paleo Pines, where you collect dinosaurs who help you farm. Stories are at the heart of almost every game, and farming sims are no different. We don't want to play the same story over and over again. Unless we do, in which case we'll replay Stardew Valley. But for new games, we need new stories. Collectibles. Every farming sim has this, and I'll tell you why. Cozy gamers are collectors. We completionists. I know I'm generalising, but how many of us have a plushy collection that's probably at least 80% squishmallows? Collecting things is fun. Whether it's fish, bugs, ancient artefacts, or even furniture, we've come to expect some sort of collectible element in every farming sim. Paleo, Stargy Valley and Coral Island have bundles to complete, while Fay Farm has a huge almanac to fill. It's just so satisfying to tick the final item off the list. I'm including this on the list as a feature that really needs to stay in farming sims, but it could use some innovation. We've all collected fish and bugs until all we can see when we close our eyes are fish and bugs. Give us something new to collect. A variety of activities. Some common examples of activities including in farming sims are farming, obviously, fishing, bug catching, mining, and even some combat. The point is that the best farming sims have loads to do besides just farming. These activities usually serve some kind of purpose such as collecting resources to craft things or finding items for collections. It probably goes without saying, but doing the same one or two activities indefinitely gets boring pretty quickly for most people. So we want lots to do and we want some kind of reward for doing it. One game that's done a great job with this recently is Fay Farm. The activities are fun and varied and they all serve a purpose. The flower breeding in particular I think is a brilliant addition, because the custom bred flowers are used to purchase colour palettes to customise furniture with so you get to see all your hard work pay off with a pretty awesome reward. In addition to having a variety of activities, the best farming sims have an activity that's exclusive to that game. Bringing in a brand new activity is the kind of innovation that keeps games of a specific type, like farming sims, from going stale. Coral Island is a perfect example of this. Not only does the game have all the usual activities, it also introduced diving, and the diving has a purpose unique to the story of Coral Island. Now, I realise that Coral Island isn't the only game to include diving, but they did it in such a new and innovative way. I don't want to give anything away for anyone who hasn't played yet, 
but the diving is actually integral to the main story of the game. Moonstone Island is another good example, as it's added several new features, including dungeons. This is not something we commonly find in farming sims, but I think there's a strong possibility it'll catch on. Moonstone Island mixes the farming sim genre with creature collecting, deck building and even some roguelite elements. Maybe merging genres is the way forward for farming sims. Just a super quick break to say if you're enjoying this video, please like and consider subscribing. It means the world to me and it helps me grow my channel and my community. Thank you! Interesting characters NPCs are the backbone of most farming sims, but they need to be interesting, they need backstories, they need depth and they need to be likeable, otherwise they're just sort of there. Many farming sims include the possibility for romance and even starting a family, in which case it's imperative that the NPCs are, you know, characters we enjoy getting to know and want to spend time with. Palea has fantastic characters. Even though there are loads of NPCs, every single one of them is well developed. Personally, I'm not actually that fussed about socialising with NPCs on the whole, but in Palea I find myself wanting to get to know the characters, to learn about their past and spend time with them. Something Palea definitely got right in this area is giving the characters relationships with each other. When you talk to one character, they'll reference others, such as their spouses, parents or children. It all adds to the intrigue. Something that I think is absolutely essential to make a farming sim stand out is some way to make every player's experience unique. Romance, marriage and having children is a good example of this. If there's a decent number of romanceable characters, it not only makes your playthrough different to other players, but it also adds replayability value. Maybe you want to try playing again, but this time marrying a different NPC. Or maybe this time you'll have two kids instead of one. Another good example is the possibility for different careers or specialisms. Honestly, I don't think we see this enough in farming sims because the emphasis is generally on leveling up every skill. But I do think career options would be a really good way to differentiate one player's experience from another's. Again, Palea does include this. While you are encouraged to level up all skills, you get to choose a specialty, which gives you a specific focus. These kinds of options are so important because they allow players to tell their own stories. As I said earlier in the video, stories are at the heart of games, and being able to change or customise our story makes the game feel like it's ours. It makes it feel more immersive, and above all, it keeps us coming back for more. Some kind of design element. Although I don't consider Animal Crossing New Horizons a true farming sim, as it didn't have farming when it was first released. It is an absolutely massive inspiration to so many games in the farming sim genre. A one aspect of ACNH that proved super popular was the ability to make custom designs and share them. I don't know about you, but I used to spend hours searching for the perfect designs on the gallery, because I'm frankly not much of an artist. But those custom designs let me make my island exactly what I wanted it to be. Recently, Moonstone Island has brought this back. You can craft a loom and use it to design your own wallpaper and flooring, and not only that, they've implemented a way to share your designs for others to use. You can literally copy and paste a code into the game to use someone else's design, and it's absolute genius. Following on from the last point, decorating is a massive must for farming sims. Being able to place furniture both outside and inside, being able to change your walls and flooring, being able to place lots of lovely plants and flowers wherever you want them is really popular among cosy gamers. Having this level of customisation means you can really make a game your own and gives you a whole new reason to play the game. It's very unusual now for decorating not to be a part of farming sims, but I think an example of a game that has fantastic customisation and decorating options is Palea. I've really struggled to find time to play Palea often, but I've seen some absolutely gorgeous designs that people have made in the game, with the massive range of furniture and decor available. My personal favourite farming sim for decorating right now is Disney Dreamlight Valley. I absolutely love some of the items you can get, 
and every update we get more in the star paths, which I'm obsessed with. And of course it doesn't hurt that many of them are themed to some of our favourite movies. Character customization that's in-depth, inclusive and has a wide range of options is always a winner. While not strictly a farming sim, I recently played the playtest of Critter Cove and was hugely impressed by the character customization. You can be human or animal, you can even have a TV for a head. There's a full colour palette which I love. There's a range of hairstyles, tails, wings, spikes, it has everything. The only thing I felt was lacking was the ability to choose an outfit, which does come later in the game but I think most of us prefer to have it at the start. A fantastic example of outfit customization is Disney Dreamlight Valley. There's an enormous range of clothes, you can constantly find or buy more options, you can even design your own and there are plenty of costumes specific to Disney characters. Most recently we got Nightmare Before Christmas costumes and as you can see, I now live in my Oogie Boogie outfit. That's the end of my list of essential features to make a farming sim stand out from the crowd. Let me know if you agree with my list, if you have anything else to add and I'd love to know what's your stance on the farming sim genre. Do you think it's had its day in the sun or does it just need more innovation? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon with more cosy games.